World War One, a series of conferences were held at Whitehall between 1905 and 1906 concerning the military cooperation with France and the other Entente powers in the event of war with Germany. Director of Naval Intelligence Charles Utley assessed that two Royal Navy ships would need to function in such a way that the war would be captured by German commercial shipping and the blockade of German ports. The blockade. the blockade was considered useful for two reasons. It could force the enemy fleet to fight and then it would be destroyed, and then the other act of economic weaponry and destroy the German commerce. It, it was, was not until 1908, however, that the blockade of Germany formally appeared in the Navy's war plans, and even some officials were divided on how feasible this was. The plans remained in a state of change and revisions until 1914, and then the Navy was obviously had to put the plans into action and see how well the blockade actually worked. Meanwhile, Germany had no plans to manage her wartime food supply since they were in peacetime. She was also able to produce some of 80% of her total consumption, and furthermore, they had overland imports such from the Netherlands, Scandinavia, and even Romania were unaffected by naval blockades. However, there were some issues. There were conscription of young boys and men, meaning they had to go and fight. There were requisitions and conscriptions of farm labourers as well, making a certain quota per month. And then the requisition of horses, then there was poor weather, and then the division of nitro and fertiliser news for military explosives and gasoline. All combinated in the considerable drop in agriculture output during the Great War. So that's why Germany really needed those um, exports, well imports, sorry. The British, with their overwhelming sea power, established a naval blockade on Germany immediately at the outbreak of war in August 1914, issuing the comprehensive list of contrabands that would be prohibited in American trade with the Central Powers. The British, with their overwhelming sea power, established a naval blockade on Germany immediately at the outbreak of war in August 1914, issuing a comprehensive list of contrabands that would be prohibited by American traders to the Central Powers as early as November 1914. <laughs> They also declared the North Sea to be a war zone, with any ships entering the North Sea doing at their own risk. The blockade was unusually restrictive in the food stuff were considered contraband of war. There was also complaints about the British of international law, however, most neutral merchant vessels agreed to dock in the British ports to be inspected and escorted lest any illegal cargo was disdained from Germany throughout the British minefields at their destination. There were two patrols, the Northern Patrol and the Dover Patrol, close to the North Sea as possible and near the English Channel, respectively. The Germans regarded this as a blatant attempt to starve the German people into submission, and this was rightfully so, and this is what actually started the U-boat campaign against the British blockade, and that's how you get the vice versa, but the U-boat campaign is for another day. Nonetheless, it is still accepted that the blockade made a huge contribution to the war and the outcome of the war, because by 1915, Germany imports had fallen by 55% and the exports had fallen by 53%, and that was only in 1915 alone. So there was also powdered milk, makeshift bread, stoner one hand in, or the winter turnip. There was also the step to brand winter, which is the turnip winter, which is actually the famine that actually destroyed all the turnips in winter, killing almost 100,000 people in this blockade. The British did succeed, but at a cost. And of course, they also restricted Austria-Hungary and even the Ottoman Empire as well. But, I don't really think those are for another day, those are basically the same, but Germany had the biggest, uh, the short end of the stick, if you will, so. That is the British blockade of Germany, sorry it wasn't so cohesive, cohesive or even long, honestly. But, um, yeah, at the end of the day, it is the British blockade of Germany, so. There's nothing more you can do. So I hope you learned something. And uh, it wasn't tragic as you would think, but it was pretty darn horrifying for a hundred thousand people to die, and a hundred thousand more, you know, on the brink of starvation before the wars end. And there was actually um, the Weimar um, strikes and stuff like that, just like in Petrograd. And the Germans were so afraid that they kind of went for that armistice as well. That was another key factor into the armistice. Uh, no revolutions in Germany, so that's it. Hope you learned something, and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Um, I'm gonna try and do what, what we got to do. Uh, offenses and defenses sound good. Battle of loose. Uh, I don't know what else. Battle of loose and something else. I'll figure out something. Learn something.